Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing? Okay, we've installed Reaper and the SWS extension, and now it's time to ramp up things even more. And so with that, enhancement add-ons. That's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be tackling quite a number of things, starting with the Repack add-on. This is the package manager for Reaper. For example, out of the box, it has access to more than 1,300 Reaper resource packages, including scripts and effects and language packs, themes, and finally, extensions. When we get to Reaper's first run, you'll see a little bit about what Repack is all about. And then we're going to be tackling VSTs. You hear VST all the time if you delve anything into DAWs. What exactly are they? Well, we're going to be explaining what that is. Then we're going to be looking at Tokyo Dawn Records Nova EQ. This thing, its HPF is wonderful, and I'll explain what an HPF is and why I'm electing to have you have this. Then we're going to be looking at Vox and Go's SPAN. And SPAN is actually an acronym, and when we get there, I'll explain what a SPAN is, specifically an FFT SPAN. And then finally, we're going to be looking at TV Pro Audio's DP Meter 4, audiobook narrators and e-learning narrators. This can be just invaluable, and I'll explain why when we get there. Now, as far as caveats for this video is concerned, yes, we still have the UAC issue that we had in the previous video. Finally, if this is your first time in the video, especially if this is your first time in Reaper for Voice Talent, like this video, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, setting it to all, and watch the video all the way through so that you don't miss anything. In fact, in this particular video, you may want to watch it a few times so that you may pick up something that you've missed. And finally, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. I definitely will be reading them and I'll be looking to see if anybody has any questions or comments. With that, let's get started. Okay, so we have Repack first. And as it says here, it is a package manager for Reaper. It is not a zip file or a .exe as in other installation programs. It is a .dll. That means that we have to manually install it. And so when we get there, I'll explain. So we hit the Windows 64-bit, and we save this DLL, Dynamic Link Library is what it stands for, and we save it to the desktop. Now, for the user guide, here's something else that's kind of kooky with Repack. The user guide is not a PDF. It is another web page, but it's short and it's explanatory, so you know it's not that big of a deal. But to get there, you can either click on this user guide menu option, or you can hit this hyperlink down here, and either way, you greet it with this. And if you read through, you'll understand how to use the Repack Manager. It's very, very cool. Now, the next three packages are actually what's known as VSTs. Now, what exactly is a VST? Well, picture yourself in a recording studio and even maybe a music recording studio. You have a mixer, you have microphones, you have cables, you may have an actual EQ that the engineer can turn the knobs and all this good stuff. Maybe some compressors, uh, some crossovers, that type of thing. All of that collectively is what's known as studio technology, the ST in VST. Now, what does the V stand for? It stands for virtual, meaning that it's inside a computer. So a VST is a software thing that sort of mocks up what is actually in the mechanical world. So like EQs or compressors or whatever. Now the advantage for VSTs that they have over the mechanicals generally is that the mechanicals you use during the recording process. Whereas with VSTs, you apply them after the stuff has been recorded and you can turn them off and turn them on as you wish to affect the audio without actually affecting the audio, the final product, so to speak. So you can erase or not erase. That's what VSTs are about. Now, with that said, let's go to the Tokyo Dawn Records website and their Nova EQ. Now, why are you suggesting an EQ when Reaper has one, right? Well, I'm 
not specifically suggesting an EQ. I'm specifically suggesting what's known as a high pass filter or HPF. There's very, very, very few things that I can ding Reaper about. And one of them is their high pass filter on their EQs. They don't have what's known as a slope parameter. Down here, you see slope, right? A high pass filter, as you see in this graphic here, is exactly that. Anything past this frequency in this boundary, so to speak, anything higher is allowed to pass through. That's why it's called a high pass filter. Some people call it a low cut filter. In other words, if it's lower than this, it's cut. And you can see there's nothing here, but there's all this stuff here, right? The steepness of this line right here is what's known as the slope of the HPF. So I can make it really, really, really gentle and come way over here, or I can make it brick wall, basically, like it's like you see here. Reaper doesn't have this parameter in its EQs. And so this is why I'm recommending the TDR Nova specifically for its HPF. And so with that, let's scroll down here. We go to the Windows installer. We hit, I accept the EULA. And it says, okay, do you want to subscribe? If you want to, that's fine. And then we save this installer to the desktop. Now, the user manual, it says it's a PDF, but it's not really. If you click on it, it's a web page, but you can print to a PDF if you want. And it is very, very well done as well. It explains what all these knobs and buttons are. It explains how to read all this stuff in the uh, in the graphic here. And it also explains how to analyze using these graphics and making changes using these controls here. So it's very well done. And now let's talk about the third VST, which is the Vox and Go Span VST. Now, what exactly is a span? Well, it's in capital letters, so it's an acronym, and it stands for Spectrum Analyzer. In fact, it's an FFT span, or a Fast Fourier Transform spectrum analyzer. If you want to Google that and go down that rabbit hole, it is an extremely fascinating journey. It goes through all kinds of audio theory and uh, you learn a lot, you really do. Suffice to say, the bottom line is if you look at this graphic, it basically shows you the interaction between your voice and your recording space. If there's something like this where the frequency is a little hyped, maybe you need to take an EQ and drop it down a little bit. Or if it's got a sufficiency here, maybe you take the EQ and then you prop it up a little bit, that type of thing. So anyway, that's what the Vox and Ghost Band can buy you. Now, let's talk about downloading it. We click on this long button, we click Save File, and then we hit Save, and it's saved to our desktop. And finally, we have the TV Pro Audio DP Meter 4. This thing can be an invaluable tool for audiobook narrators and for e-learning narrators who are interested in their RMS and peak values. Real-time analyzation on this. So we hit download. We go to DP Meter 4 here. We click on the window link. We hit save and we hit the desktop. Now, as far as the manual is concerned, it's a usual PDF. You right click and you hit save link as or save file as, and then you can save it wherever you want. Now that's all the downloading and the user guides. Now let's talk about the repack installation. This is going to be an interesting journey to say the least. We want to pull up this PC or whatever you call the Windows Explorer. Then you're going to go to C drive and then you're going to go to users and then you're going to go to whatever user ID you're going to be using. Now, normally you would want to go to app ball but you see there is no app vault. Well, it's a hidden system folder. This means that we have to do a little tweaking on Windows Explorer so that we can see it. And the way that we do this is we go to View, and then Options, and then Change Folder and Search Options. In Windows 7, if I remember correctly, it's just View, and then Change Folder and Search Options. Either way, you greet it with this window. One thing that I would change, if you don't use this quick access service here at all, then I would change this to this PC. And that now what will happen is anytime that you launch uh, Windows Explorer, it'll immediately go to this PC, not quick access. 
And that way, you know, I know some people, they, they go quick access and then they have to click on this PC all the time. Well, this is the shortcut of how to get rid of that uh, necessity. Now, then we have view and we go to show hidden files, folders, and drives. Very important that we have this. Just for convenience sake, I also uncheck hide extensions for known file types. What this enables us to do is to actually see if this file is a .docx, for example, a Word document, as opposed to .xlsx, which is a you know Excel document or whatever. It's plain. It's right there. One of the biggest reasons I do this is for text files. Maybe you want to name that text file something else besides .txt, right? Well, with this checked, you'll never be able to do that. So you uncheck it. And then finally, hide protected operating system files. We uncheck that. It's going to say, you sure you want to do this? You hit yes. Then we hit apply. And then we hit apply to folders. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And we hit OK. And all of a sudden, we have app data. Now, maybe you're tempted to go into application data, but look. This is a shortcut. Anytime you see the shortcut, if you try to double click on it, it's going to deny you access. So we go into app data. Then we're going to be going into roaming. And then normally, it, whenever you run Reaper, you would have what's known as a Reaper profile, which we're going to be getting into in the very next video. And there would be something here between Personas and Skype that said Reaper. We have to create that right now. So we right click in this clean space somewhere and we say new folder and then we entitle it Reaper. Then we go into Reaper and we have to do this again, a new folder. And this time we're going to call it user plugins. And we're going to go into it. This is where this DLL needs to reside for Reaper to acknowledge it. So I'm right dragging with my right mouse button. And it says move to, right? But that's not what we want to do. That's why I'm right dragging. Whenever I do that, it says, okay, do you want, what do you want to do here? So I want to copy here. The repack add-on has just been installed. The rest of the VSTs are going to be easy, easy. So now we can get out of Windows Explorer. Now let's talk about the TDR Novo. We right click and we hit extract all and we hit extract. And there it is, the installer. We double click. Now in Windows 10, you have this. Windows protected your PC. In Windows 7, you don't have this. Okay, with Windows 10, you're going to have to hit more info and then run anyway. And we have the UAC. And then we have the welcome screen, the EULA. Okay, now if you have. Pro Tools, then it's cool to have the AAX plugin. If not, then uncheck. If you have a 32 bit machine, you must use 32 bit add ons. You cannot use the 64 bit add ons. If you're in a 64 bit machine, you can use 64 or 32, but I use only 64. And I hit next. And this is where it's going to place it. This is where it's going to place the VST3. And we hit install. And like that, the TDR Nova is installed. That's it. So we can get out of this Windows Explorer. Now let's go with the Vox and Go Span VST. We double click on its installer. The UAC pops up. There's the EULA. We hit next. Again, the same thing applies. I'm using only 64 bit because I'm in a 64 bit environment. If I have Pro Tools, 12 plus anyway, then I can use the AAX. Otherwise, I don't check it. So this looks good, and I hit next. Here's where it's going to um, set it. Here's next, and hit install. And like that, the Vox and Go Span VST is installed. Now let's talk about DP Meter 4. Again, right click on the zip file, hit extract all, hit extract, double click on the installer. Uh, yes, I do wish to continue. Here's the UAC. Again, the welcome screen. The a change log here, which is very cool. Uh, the EULA, I accept. And here again are the components. Again, 64 bit VST2 and VST3. Again, if you had um, Pro Tools, you could do the AAX. So we hit next. 
Uh, we hit next because those are where they're going to be residing. And hit next again and hit install. And like that, the DP meter for setup is um, set up. So we can uncheck read me text unless you really want to read it. And we hit finish. In the next video, we finally run Reaper for the very first time. In the description below, there will be links to the four programs we've gone over, the Windows-centric fundamental sequence playlist, and the Mac-centric fundamental sequence playlist. Now, if you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, setting it to all, so that you know when I go live or whenever I upload another video. So this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and you have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.